Dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry that my own busy digital agenda prevents me being with you in person. I'm sure that you will continue the rich discussion that took place at last year's conference and also last month in Budapest. And I hope you will keep up the path and continue to drive the international debate launched in Europe some years ago. The stakes are high. The IoT is expected to connect 50 billion devices by 2020. That is about six for each man, woman and child on the planet. The shifts from an Internet of People to an Internet of Things will create unprecedented market opportunities. The EIT requires a new way of thinking about technology. As objects start to sense and communicate, they become tools to help us deal with complex or urgent situations. Applications like health monitoring, interconnected cars, location-based services will bring benefits to users and society. To enable the IoT to develop further, we must focus not just on the market and technology, we must gain consumer trust. And this requires an ethical and legal framework supported by technology and service developers and providing people with control and security. So we need to design a governance model that will first guarantee unique identifiers, second ensure the security and stability of networks, third support competition among service providers and avoid data monopolies and finally ensure proper use of data. This is not just about how to name and address resources on the internet, it is also about technical issues like standards, spectrum and interoperability. And it is about socio-political issues like privacy and ethics. Over the next 18 months we will be addressing those issues. I will now briefly touch on our thinking. First. IoT object identification requires us to accommodate all the different numbering and identification systems out there and ensure they are interoperable. Without this, the IoT might develop as a multitude of intranets of things or even simply intranets of goods instead of a true internet of things. This poses a number of interesting questions, like how the domain name system will support the networks which link objects together, like who should give out the identifiers and IP addresses and how they should do it, and like how we can ensure transparency, competition and accountability at the EU level. Second. On privacy issues, the large-scale deployment of IoT is likely to profoundly transform the current model. New systems will be more able to collect and process information about people and objects, perhaps automatically. In the ongoing review of the Data Protection Directive, the Commission is looking at the use of privacy-enhancing technologies and the concepts of privacy by design and the right to be forgotten. Also, I would like the industry to work on the technical options for a new kind of freedom, the silence of the chips. Don't worry, it's not the latest horror film from Belgium. What I'm looking for is an economically sustainable and socially responsible way not to permanently disable or kill an RFID chip, but to ensure the end user can control access. The end user would then be able to decide between privacy and continuing to have the value added services of the ship. The idea is to empower users, allowing both privacy and innovation. Moving on to security, today's security problems, spam, denial of service attacks, identity theft and virus are already a big challenge for all of us. That will become even more acute as we move to the Internet of Things. And therefore, we need to first ensure the confidentiality and integrity of information stored and transmitted. Second, ensure services are available for obtaining information from heterogeneous sources. And third, determine accountability and legal liability in highly dynamic networks of many connected devices. And as my last point, I would underline that the skill and complexity of the IoT will put a strain on existing Internet architecture. 
and that will in turn affect IoT timing and depth of penetration. We don't yet know if there will be sufficient spectrum to connect the expected huge number of tagged devices. We are, of course, ready to provide support with our spectrum policy, but for this we need clear evidence. If you are gathering such evidence, please do let us know. Ladies and gentlemen, the potential of the IoT now has to be turned into a responsible, secure, resilient and user-centered reality. My objective is to ensure that our IoT governance model is a genuine expression of global and multi-stakeholder consensus. And I therefore hope you will all actively engage in the IoT expert group and in the public consultation which we are launching later this year. I wish you every success in your discussions.